let's look at a few important properties of permutations. Some of these came up in previous videos, but they're so important that it's worth really being specific about them. So first one is that every permutation of a finite set can be written as a cycle or as a product of disjoint cycles. So it's either a single cycle, maybe something like one, three, something like one, three, five, two, or it could be there's multiple cycles. We could have something like one goes to four, three, two, five, six, nine. The point is, is that even though there's multiple cycles in there, there's nothing in common between them. I couldn't have three in this one and three in this one. Again, a permutation might be able to be written that way, but you can always do it in such a way that these things are in fact disjoint. Now, taking that one step further, if you have that kind of disjoint cycles, then you can actually commute those cycles. So, something like 1, 4 times 3, 2, 5, because they have nothing in common, 3, 2, 5 times 1, 4 is the same thing, just written a different way. Now, final one, and this one is huge. It makes perfect sense, but the order of a permutation of a finite set written in the same disjoint cycle notation, the order of one of the permutations has to be the least common multiple of the lengths of the cycles. So here, once again, let's take a look at this 1, 4, 3, 2, 5 permutation. We've got a length 2 and a length 3. Obviously, the least common multiple of those things would be 6. So the order of that cycle would be 6. If I had something that was 2, 7 times 1, 3, 5, 4, I've got a length 2 and a length 4. The least common multiple of 3 and 4 gives me an order of 4. What this lets us do is very quickly kind of classify all the elements in a permutation group, perhaps without even knowing what they are. So for example, let's consider S5. We know that's all the permutations of the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And in fact, that's going to have five factorial elements. There's five factorial permutations on that, which is 120 different permutations. I certainly don't want to write out what all 120 are, but we can actually start thinking about what are they like. So what I'm going to do is just to kind of modify the notation a little bit so that we can talk about just lengths of cycles. If I write that with an underline on it, I'm not going to refer to the single cycle where 5 goes to itself. That's going to be a cycle of length 5. So certainly, there are cycles of length 5. We also could have a cycle of length 4 together with a cycle of length 1. Of course, the cycle of length 1 doesn't really do anything. That's just saying that that element goes to itself. We have a cycle of length 3 and a cycle of length 2. We also could have a cycle of length 3 and have the other two elements go to themselves. I could have a cycle of length 2, another cycle of length 2, 
and then have the remaining element go to itself. I could have a cycle of length 2 and every other element goes to itself. Or I could have every element go to itself. Of course, that's just the identity element. OK. So let's think about this. The order of a cycle of length 5, well, there's only one cycle there. The least common multiple is obviously 5. 4 and 1 would have order 4. 3 and 2 would have order 6. This would have order 3. This would have order 4. Something of this type would have order, I'm oh, sorry, back up. Least common multiple of 2 and 2, that should be order 2. This one has order 2. And this one is just the identity has order 1. Now what this allows us to do is we could use some combinatorics to actually count how many elements of each type there are. So for example, if I wanted to know how many order 3 elements are in S5. Well, that's right here. The only ones that are order 3 are the ones that have 3 cycle and 2 elements that map to themselves. So how can I do this? Well, let's first of all, let's pick two elements that map to themselves. Combinatorix says that there's 5 choose 2, which is 5 factorial over 3 factorial 2 factorial, which is 5 times 4 over 2 times 1, if you simplify it. it gives me 10 different ways to pick those two elements that map to themselves. But then, the other three elements have to be in the 3 cycle. How many ways are there to put them in the 3 cycle? Well, the next thing we need to remember is that something like 1, 2, 3 is the same thing as 2, 3, 1, just written differently. The important thing is the order but since the order wraps around, these are really the same thing. So, to count how many three cycles there are, once the three elements have been picked, what we're going to do is say, it doesn't matter what the first element is, there are then two choices for what the second element is, and then once that first and the second element are picked, the third one is automatically chosen. So, if you have three things, if you've got three elements, there are really only two distinct three cycles. So putting that together, we choose the two elements that are fixed. The other three elements, there's two ways to order them. So 10 choices for the things that are fixed times the two ways to order the remainder. There are in fact, 20 elements of order 3.